If you have too much algae in your tank, you know what happens to your corals. Turns out, the same thing happens out here on the reef. Coming up in this FinCast. It may not look like it, but there's something missing from these beautiful reefs off the Florida coast. And most of the reefs like them along the Atlantic coast from Bermuda all the way south to the Panama Canal. It's this, the long-spined or diadema sea urchin. Famed researcher and aquarium hobbyist Martin Moe is a leading expert on urchins. We lost the diadema big time. In 1983, there was a plague that hit only one organism, the diadema sea urchin, and it started at the mouth of the Panama Canal. It swept through the Caribbean, through the Bahamas, through Florida, all the way up to Bermuda in the space of 13 months. The urchins were thick on the reef, with densities as high as one to four per square meter off the Florida coast, and higher in other parts of the Caribbean. Experts thought the urchins would make a rapid comeback. They were wrong. And we thought, oh, they'll come back pretty soon because they're extremely fecund. A female uh, diadema can put out 15 to 20 million eggs, but that didn't happen. The, the macroalgae overtook the reef so fast that it eliminated the settlement areas where coral and diadema could settle. And so as a result, the diadema have not come back yet, especially here in Florida. In our interview, Martin talked about keystone species, which means it's a species that everything else depends upon. The diadema is one of those species. These big spiny sea urchins, what they do is that they clear the, their herbivores. They're the primary keystone herbivore of the coral reefs. And they clean the reefs of all the macroalgae that interferes with coral growth. So when the coral reef is covered with macroalgae, the coral just can't compete. And so the algae eventually overtakes the coral and destroys the coral. Uh, now, if you put the diadema on the reef, then the diadema eat all the macroalgae and they, make, they clear the substrates so that the coral larvae can settle and grow as well as other invertebrate larvae can settle on the clean surfaces and grow. So Martin is leading the charge to spawn and grow the urchins in captivity with the hope that tank-raised urchins can jumpstart the population. This is the unit you have developed in order to raise these diadema in captivity. How does it work? Well, uh, yeah, this thing took like four years to develop uh, through a l experimentation. This is probably the, the 14th iteration of this particular device. It is a culture vessel that keeps the diadema larvae in suspension. All urchins, it seems, are not created equal. The diadema take longer to develop. Most sea urchin larvae, within 15 to 25 days, they have gone through their larval period and they have become a juvenile. With diadema, uh, they're just getting started at 20 days. That's, uh, they go like 40 days, sometimes up to 60 days, in which they are in the larval form. They're fragile, making it difficult to do simple tasks like clean the tanks. Uh, you can't put them through a siphon tube, for example, because that would break the arms. This guy, or this, this girl, actually, I know that it's a girl because it spawned, uh, was spawned on May the 6th, 2009. Despite those and numerous other challenges, Martin Moe is making progress. In 2009, he started with a spawn of 10,000 eggs and nurtured 100 diadema all the way to adulthood. Well, this one is named Ursula. Uh, <laughs> and there, the other one, the, the male, I think, is uh, Junior. And the other female over there is Matilda. I did make a mistake one day, and I wound up with one spine through my finger completely. Uh, I only did that once. Are those venomous or just... They're, they are, well, they do have a, a toxin on them. It's kind of like a bee sting. Martin, or Skip as his friends call him, has given away many of those diadema to other researchers so they can further what we know about these important creatures. 
Others go on display at shows like this one at the Boyd Enterprises booth at Macna in Des Moines. But the ultimate goal is to put them back on the reef in order to help the diadema regain a foothold. And if we can raise them in enough numbers, then we can uh, create coral reef laboratories, I like to call them, where we select a portion of the coral reef and we keep it artificially maintained with enough diadema to perform the historical ecological function and they'll be close enough together so that when they spawn they can actually produce viable, uh, viable larvae. Until they can, Martin continues to refine his own techniques and the perfect conditions to raise diadema in captivity while organizations such as Moat Marine Laboratories are taking his findings and trying to move into a more advanced phase of large-scale production. Each attempt bringing this keystone species that much closer to returning a missing piece of our beloved reefs.